since Patrick from GarageBand Guide, since he released his video on how to install plugins. I feel like there's been some updates to the Mac OS operating system and there's been little changes to how you install plugins in GarageBand. I've released videos before in the past on how to do it, but I feel like we haven't really covered it comprehensively in a way where it like, you know, covers all bases. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to use the DMG file for installing plugins, as well as how to drag the component file into your library as well. So there's two methods of doing it and we'll get into that now. So for this tutorial, we're gonna use Blue Cat Audio's Destructor, which you can see right here. It's like a guitar amp, probably one of the best guitar amps that you can get. And what you wanna do is you wanna get the Mac demo right here. This will download a DMG file to your desktop, just like this. You click on it and it sends it to your browser. Now it depends on what browser you're using, but uh, usually it'll look something like that at the bottom. So once it's done, what you wanna do is just grab it like that, drag it to your desktop. And from there, you just open it. Then it's gonna give you all this stuff. If you wanted to, you could read through it, but that's gonna be very boring. Blue Cat Audio is a trusted company, so it's not like they're gonna reveal your personal information to anybody or anything like that. There can't be anything in that agreement that allows a company to do what they're talking about to Kyle. So just click on this package here, this open box, and then it'll guide you through the installation process. Now, because we're only using the audio units in GarageBand's case, because that's what it uses, we're gonna actually just get rid of this stuff because frankly, we don't really need it. So we're gonna hit, we're gonna get rid of that and then we're gonna hit continue. We're gonna hit install. And then you wanna type in your password. There, it's done. Hit close. We're gonna exit out of that as well. And then what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna close GarageBand quickly. I find that something that we usually miss in these videos is that you typically have to restart your computer. That's something I've noticed anyway. So go ahead and do that now and then we'll come back. So now we're gonna open GarageBand and I'm gonna, I'm gonna open a new project because this is old. I don't know why GarageBand goes to the old, your last project. They should just give you the option, but you know, that's neither here nor there. So once your GarageBand project is open, what you wanna do is you wanna bring up an audio track. You're gonna go down into your plugins like this. You can also hit B on your keyboard that will bring up your smart controls. Click on that, audio units. Blue Cat Audio, and then there's the Destructor. There, this is just the demo version though. So that's how you install plugins in GarageBand using the DMG file. But there's other ways of installing plugins too, right? Like you also have the components file like I talked about earlier. And in that case, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the Bob Perry Noise Gate on plugins for free. This is a great place to get plugins, by the way. And you wanna go down to your Mac OS X AU right here. We're gonna click on that and we're gonna download it just the same way we did before. Again, we're gonna drag it on the desktop just like that. And then we're gonna unzip the file. I'm gonna go like that, bring it out of here, just like this, the Bob Perry noise gate. This is a great noise gate. I used it for my noise gate tutorial the other day. So here it is. Here's the uh, open folder on my desktop. And then here's a components file. This is, this is the components file. So I'm actually just gonna drag it out of here like that. And then this is where it gets important. What you wanna do is you wanna press go like that. And then you're gonna go computer, Macintosh HD, library, audio, and then you're gonna go down to plugins right here. You're gonna go down to your components, and then you're gonna drag the BPA noise gate in here, just like that. You're gonna type in your password as well if you need to. So again, now we're gonna restart the computer. I find that you have to do that whenever you do, especially if you have components files, you wanna restart your computer. So we're gonna come back in a sec. So after you've restarted your computer, uh, you wanna open GarageBand again, just like here. So what you wanna do is you wanna hit B on your keyboard in order to bring up your smart controls. By the way, I got a present for you. Go to producersociety.com slash free mixing cheat sheet. That'll put you on my list to get a free mixing cheat sheet. And I send all kinds of cool tips and stuff that I don't share anywhere else. You can also join my forum at forum.producersociety.com. Um, for now, it's totally free to sign up, but uh, in the future, I'll probably lock it down and then turn it into a full course platform. And then you're gonna click on one of your plugin slots down here. We're gonna go audio units. There's Bob Perry audio and then the BPA gate. So we're gonna open that up, but there's gonna be an issue, right? With the new update, they're, they're gonna block it from downloading. So what you have to do is you hit cancel, probably hit cancel again. Then it says you can't use it. That's very unfortunate. So you go down into your system settings down here. Then we're gonna go privacy and security. We're gonna scroll all the way down here and then it's gonna say the BPA gate component was not allowed. So we're gonna hit allow anyway, type in your password. We're gonna get out of that. And just for good measure, I'm actually gonna exit out of GarageBand again. 
and we're gonna open it back up. I find this helps if, sometimes if it doesn't go through properly. Just a simple reboot is enough to get it to work usually. So there we go, we're gonna hit B again. We're gonna go down into the smart controls, audio units, Bob Perry audio, BPA gate. And it's gonna say blah, 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 hit open. And there we go, now it's open. Now one thing you may have to do, which is something that Patrick points out in his video as well, is you need to hit GarageBand, go to settings. You need to make sure that your audio units have been enabled. For whatever reason, I'm not sure why GarageBand or the Mac OS operating system, they will disable this by default. Not sure why, but you have to make sure that that's clicked. And there you have it. That's how you install both kinds of plugins in GarageBand. Uh, if this was helpful to you, make sure you like it. And then I'll see you in the next one.